D and D Outdoors. Today on the show, hunting has opened up across the West. Dove season is a little over a week away. And it's just another a great day here in Arizona. We got lots of rain this week, which kind of screwed over me hunting. But can't complain about rain. How have you been, Dustin? Pretty good, man. You, you getting it rain too? Oh, yeah. We've been getting pounded, pounded. So I was planning to go out Saturday and Sunday, but my areas that I go to, you have to go through washers and stuff. And then, like, I was looking online and people were posting pictures of those washers running. And I didn't want the helicopter to have to come get me out or any of that fun stuff. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it out this week. But looks like the weather's going to clear up next weekend, so I'll be able to get out there and chase some deer out here in Arizona with my bow. Sounds like you wimped out, man. A little bit. Yeah, I, I really just didn't want to get wet, too. I mean, I'm not. As you can see, you know, that picture right there, you yeah. had to hike a mile through that. Ugh. Yeah, but at least with that, you know, you aren't going to have like a wall of water come out of nowhere and sweep you away. <laughs> you know like we have out here in our washes yeah i mean it's I mean, fun it was, but it was times where you know you're taking a step you don't know if it's gonna be you know ankle deep knee deep thigh deep <laughs> see i don't mind that as much i do <laughs> see, i guess you need to get some bigger waders get them up to your shoulders <laughs> i had chest waders but there's like oh you ain't gonna need those no <laughs> turns out you did <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, speaking of Arizona archery, I know we talked about earlier in the year, Arizona went to a first time ever we've had limits on deers in the each unit, each respected unit. You know, we have harvest quotas, X amount for can be taken by non-residents and also then a total annual limit on the units of what deer can come out of there. I think... I think we talked about our concerns with this and that the anti-hunting groups would call in and shut these units down early, if I am correct. That was, one of our, that. that was one of our biggest concerns. Well, as of the close of week one, I lied. We only have one unit closed as of today which is one of like a premier unit in Arizona that just went from draw to over the counter. So I'm not too sure if they're going to do it this week, but at the end of week one of Arizona over the counter archery, only unit is shut down is unit one out of the 35 harvested deer that could be harvested. All 35 are harvested. Um, looking through this um, report here. I am. It's, it's really interesting. I'm going to go ahead here and um, show you real quick what I'm taking a look at here. And what you can see is, um, are you seeing the spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay. What y'all can see here with the spreadsheet is, it's very interesting. This is the only unit that was closed. We're not really close to any of the other units. A lot of, a lot of zeros, lots of zeros. And I love seeing zeros, especially in this unit, because this is the unit I hunt. <laughs> so it's going to be good to see that there's plenty of hunting opportunities. I know that was some of the biggest concerns that we did have out here in Arizona, things getting closed down quickly. Um, as you can see, antler and mule deer in some units are different. Um, I am surprised that some of these units do have more uh, coos deer um or white tail i guess they call them you know they consider coos deer taking the mule deer just because of how hard they are to hunt but for the most part i mean there's still units with 140 138 tags 185 tags left i grab these units are down south where you don't really want to be playing with too often but it's pretty cool to see that i was wrong as of now it's gonna be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out if you know, these units start to close up this week and not, we still have, they closed the, the sun up on that Wednesday of the week. So as of August 24th, only unit one's closed, but it'll be as of currently. Um, and we'll see if 
more units will shut down before Wednesday, August 24th, and be open, or they'll be open for another week. How many units is there in Arizona? Oh, God. Um, I mean, a lot, I think. Um, I don't, the different difficult things, there's like one, two, then there's like 2A, 2B, there's no, I don't, there's no like unit four. Let's see here, let's count. Let's see, we have one, two, three, nine, ten, ten in region one, region two has So that's uh, 22 total with region one and two, 29, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75 units. 75 that's units. That, that's a lot of units. Yeah, 75 units. <laughs> we have here. We have like unit one, 2A, 2B, 2C, 3A, 3B, 3C, 5A, 5B, 6A, 6B, I hunt and 20B. There's also 20A and 20B. Essentially what these are, they're smaller units that they break up for, I don't know what reason, it's just kind of how they're subdivided in a way. You can't hunt game in every single unit. Like they don't all have the same amount of game. Some units, literally there's no animals, except like dove and stuff or coyotes. Um, some units, their unit was simply created to allow like bighorn sheep hunting. Because bighorn sheep are new, or were like growing the population here, and um, to subdivide the bighorn sheep units. Um, also, some units just they're big units. So, like for example, for unit twenty-two, which is one that I hunt a lot, there's twenty. That's not even divided, but that's just unit twenty-two. But in that unit, there's a twenty-two north and a twenty-two south. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of units here in Arizona. Lots of hunting opportunity, but the units are very well defined and it really gives the animals, I guess, a sense of chance to escape. See, they have Virginia color coded into like 12 or 13 different regions. Uh, then they start dropping in these little red triangles and this and that diamonds or X's to like Amherst County is split with Route 29 that you can hunt. Uh, they've changed it to where we get four weeks of rifle season on the west side, but from mid-November to the first of the year on the other side with rifle. Interesting. Yeah, and that's the, that's that's very interesting. And yeah, we don't really it's hard to really explain the hunting in Arizona, to be honest with you. Um, it's kind of a pain to figure it out. Um, but it, it does give more, I guess, opportunities and less hunters in one area. But the challenges are definitely there where it's similar to kind of like what you were saying that um the road is divided or in some places there's a road but the road's not going to divide the creek on one side of the road is going to divide it <laughs> so it's it's a challenge but i mean you just gotta i guess keep up with where you're hunting at <laughs> in a way we like to add some fun to it out here it's very common though i think also in the west because it's going to give you a lot more different chances to hunt simply because um, you're gonna have some of these units could be on the border of a really good elk unit 
but that subunit the elk really don't migrate to or game and fish doesn't want the elk in that area like the kaibab which is a trophy mule deer area by the grand canyon there's good elk hunting around it but they don't want elk on the kaibab simply because it's like world renowned for mule deer hunting a lot of people hunt it a lot of people take like 20 30 years to draw it if you want to hunt the premium rut hunts with your rifle uh, but there you can go buy an elk tag from walmart and go up there and shoot an elk the odds of you even seeing an elk zero so you're really just buying a camping trip essentially up there um yeah i don't i haven't heard of anybody actually taking an elk from there in five plus years or the people that know where the elk are at they aren't going to tell you you know so um that that's kind of what that is when it comes to those types of units um i don't really like to add a challenge i see some people like i like iowa i was looking at to go like at their deer zones they have five zones I'm like why can't stuff just be that easily easy zone one two three four five you know i mean they complain about the the deer population here i don't see why you know like south carolina I might be wrong, but it was, you know, when deer season came in statewide, it was you use whatever you want. If you want to use a bow, use a bow. If you want to use a rifle, use a rifle. If you want to man up and use a knife, go for it. <laughs> use a knife. That'd be fun. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, I don't. So, yeah, it doesn't doesn't make too much sense what we do here, but it does in the long run. I mean, for example, out of those 70 units, there's two units you can hunt buffalo in. There's probably 30 units you can hunt bighorn sheep in. Um, a lot of those units, you know, aren't going to have coos and mule deer. They only have mule deer. Or if they have coos deer, it's going to be way someplace where you're on a border of another unit where they're heavy at. It's just the, divide, the division of it, I guess, also allows more opportunity to hunt and gives more um, opportunity for revenue. I mean, and then there's some units, I believe it's like unit 36, was I used to have my game map back there, where it's just literally all uh, wilderness area where you just have to walk into it. You're on the border of Mexico. It's looking like this behind me, except no roads. And it's kind of sketchy. So, <laughs> and that's not including. Are three Is that the sections where you uh, sit there and watch people come across the border? Well, this right, my background right here, I watch people actually on this, the hill that you see off behind me to the, where the, the guy's head's at. If you look, we saw at night people's headlamps going across that hill. Wow. So, yeah, it's any place down south, really. Once you get south of Phoenix, you can see them anywhere. They've been, they've been finding illegals uh, about 80 miles north of the border in the desert so there's really no limit to where they stop their hikes at um yeah it adds a challenge to the hunt because you know i've heard stories of people glassing up deer and next thing you know here comes the pack coming over the mountain blowing the deer out <laughs> you know yeah so um yeah it's definitely interesting uh, but at least this area you can drive into and stuff so but yeah the then with that doesn't include, I think, Tohoda Odom, Navajo Nation, Half Supi, and the White Mountain Apache Tribe, and another Indian res that you can hunt on. Those are five different ones, but those are controlled by the res each respected tribal reservation game and fish. And last I heard an elk tag for like their premier units are $45,000. So they're going to get a big ass elk out of that. Yeah, forty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Let me. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a premier elk unit. Um, the White Mountain Apache Tribe hunting area. Um, it's it's one of those units where you odds you have a good chance of getting a world record bull out of it. Um, that's for somebody like you or I going in there, right? Yeah, that's, that's for you not, and I. That's not somebody off the reservation hunting the reservation. No, I think the people off the reservation either hunt for free or very limited. Um, right. Okay. The thing is, though, too, um, you have to um, get hire a guide from the reservation as well. 
Um, hunting on the reservation, you definitely want a guide because if you don't have a guide, it could get interesting out there, especially having firearms. Um, so, yeah. Okay, here we go. For one of their packages, for the first and second hunts, $20,000. Their third Maverick hunts, $18,000. There's a $3,000 trophy fee for any bowl that scores larger than 375 boon croc it has to like get huge bowls out there so it is very very more than likely you'll get a boon and croc bowl you possibly could even get a a world record bowl out of there um they're all sold out <laughs> uh for 40 forty thousand dollars you can also get a bighorn sheep hunt for your rocky mountain sheep um that one's not sold out i mean honestly for a rocky mountain bighorn sheep 40 grand that's not that bad if you look at i don't like that's a lot of money but if you look at what they charge in canada it's like anywhere between 50 to eighty thousand dollars. now you're not going to probably be getting a world record ram out of there but i mean if you want to get your uh whatever it's called your grand slam your North American curl grand slam, then I mean, that's a way to do it. Yeah, uh, it's very, very interested what they allow you to do. Um, yeah, very interested. Very, very interesting. Um, good money for them. And as I said, like you are gonna get some good elk out of the White Mountain area. It's right on the border of uh, New Mexico as well. And it's just, some of the best hunting, some of the biggest elk that get into general units border these units because the elk just wander across and just wrong place, wrong time when they come into like the 23s and the ones. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely one that it's a good hunt. It's a world record, big, big elk, big sheep, big pronghorn, whatever you want to shoot out there. It's just, it's true nature and it's pretty cool out there on the reservation. But as I said, like, you don't go out there unless you have a guide or you know someone that's a tribal member because you probably will end up in jail and your gun's taken away i've heard horror stories about that <laughs> i understand yeah oh man how to add some fun to it um but in other hunting news i think was it five six episodes we talked about the anti-hunters saying that we are exterminating the Yellowstone wolf population, if yep. you recall. Well, I have some bad news. The Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks has released their 2021 wolf report. There are 1,141 wolves currently roaming the great state of Montana. That is a net 40 different. So there's 40 less wolves this year that, that Montana is estimating than there was last year. Um, so there's an estimated of 192 wolf packs, which is right, right in line. In 2012, there were 205 wolf packs. And in 2017, there are 186 wolf packs. So the wolf packs, you know, fluctuate and all that good stuff. Um, I don't I don't think they successfully took out all the wolves at uh Montana the hunters like the anti hunters are saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean 40 an estimated 40 wolves. I mean it it's not a lot on an estimate. No. No. I mean that's just for Montana. If you think of it like the wolves are now expanding to Colorado, so their territory they could be in Wyoming, Idaho, right, whatever other states. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, they they didn't decimate the pack like everybody was hollering about. Absolutely crazy. Oh, my goodness. You just got to add some fun to a little bit of everything. Oh, you know. Another news also, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it looks like the wolf hunting, or not wolf hunting, the wolf introduction in Colorado is moving forward. Uh, they're really trying to figure out where they're going to reintroduce these animals at this time and who's going to pay for it. Um, it's still up in the fight. They do want to release them on the Western Slope, which is where all the ranching cattle, sheep are at. 
elk hunting moose and um now they're just trying to figure out the exact areas where the wolves are going to be at um the debates are still happening but they only have about a year left to get these wolves introduced so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this plays out um i mean i can't i can't really see how this is going to end well especially in some of these areas where the wolves are going the elk herd's kind of already been decimated from cwd and other stuff but it'll be interesting to see the outcome of where these are actually released at and i can't wait to get my input on it which i hope will be some positive input probably not but i'm gonna try my best to stay positive on some of it yeah probably ain't yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, to see the balance, you know, I, I am interested because I people probably won't like me saying this, but I haven't like seen huge amounts of differences where the wolves are at here in Arizona. Um, actually, the unit that just shut, only shut down for deer, the only shut down unit is where a lot of the wolves are at currently um so we'll see how it plays out um yeah it'll be it'll be fun to see how it goes you know it's gonna be i think out west it's gonna be a good hunting season with all this moisture we've had especially in arizona i've been already see, hearing talks about big antlers everywhere so hopefully big deer big elk big pronghorn big everything just comes out and you know everybody has a great hunting season i think when do y'all kick it out out your way Youth season opens up the in a month, September twenty fourth and twenty fifth, and then the following week, uh, October first, is bow season. Awesome! So it's almost here. Yeah. It is almost here. Well, thank you guys for listening to D and D Outdoors. We're really excited to be with you throughout your hunting season. Hopefully, we have some new world records to talk about as the season goes on. You know, Dustin and I love looking at the world records and saying, well, you know, if we were there, we probably would have shot it too, which we definitely wouldn't have probably. But, you know, a man can dream, right? <laughs> I'd let it walk and get bigger. Yeah, exactly. Have to leave it on for the next hunter. Oh, man. And I would like to say, actually, one last thing before we head out here. Hunters, we need to stay united. I was seeing all week long on the Arizona hunting pages, people saying, why the hell would you shoot that deer? That's a little deer. Blah, blah, blah. Going back and forth, you can't eat antlers. And then everything just getting all crazy. Remember, we have to stick together. To the, we have enough attacks. We don't need to be attacking ourselves. So if you just congratulate the people, and if you don't like people shooting spikes, just go bitch at someone else about it. Don't be complaining online or putting someone down you don't know that could be their first hunt they've ever been on and you know they're just happy to harvest something so really just stay positive when it comes to that congratulate them and as my mom always said if you don't have nothing nice to say don't say it at all and thank you guys very much for listening to dnd outdoors and we will be back here in two weeks to talk to you guys and have a great rest of your day and if you're heading to work it will be over soon 100% American made. Pure Pro is the leading company for outdoor cushions. With multiple comfortable styles to meet your hunting and fishing needs, like their flat cushions, low back cushions, or high back cushions. Don't forget about the rail sleeves. Check out which style best fits your needs at pure-pro.com. Dot com.